Well, sounds good. So as far as introductions, who all's in the room here? Okay, we have right. Ray, Blue, yes. Ron, Jake, Nick. Gold good, star. Huh? Hello, everybody. We'll give you a quiz star. upstairs. <laughs> um, and we have a tech team here, and we've got um, a representative for maintenance. We've got BJ, Meta Peers, our, one of our techs. Computer uh, technician. Technician. Trevor Timmons is our director of technology. Perfect. Uh, Jeff here, who takes care of our security, zip security, and uh, awesome. telephony. Steven, standing back here behind the camera, is our camera video production guy. No, he's, our <laughs> <laughs> he's our interface, uh, or in our inter inter oh, sorry, I called the interface. That's all right. Infrastructure. I have to leave now. <laughs> Manager and Steve over here from maintenance. Um, did you say anything else? Is that it? Yeah, John is coming. John. Oh, yeah. Yeah. John, who's our network engineer, so he'll be on soon. Awesome. So, yeah. Sounds good. We do have a safety and security director that we wanted to be here, but he's not hired yet. And do you guys have an SRO that you deal with? He's hired, but he hasn't started yet. Sorry. Okay. Do you have an SRO that you deal with? Are they involved in this process as well? Not right now. Okay. Awesome. If you have anyone that is in detention or anything that needs to come to Knuckles demo to see how durable these are, <laughs> and problem children, that's uh, feel free to bring them down too. I have kids are gone today, sorry. Well, no problem. So, thanks guys so much. I uh, really appreciate you guys having us and letting us come up and meet you guys. Um, we are Intron Systems. We're a local integrator. And then we have Salto in the building here, and I, uh, yeah, put together this little who's who so you can kind of match up. But overall, there's just two main things that we wanted to do today with you guys. Uh, the first one is just give a very, very lightning round introduction to Intron and who we are and what we do as an integrator. Uh, but really the meat and potatoes is just to pretty quickly get over to the man of the hour, Mr. Ron over here, to demonstrate the system and go through the, uh, yeah, give you a demo of Salto and all the great things they do and why they'd be an excellent fit for the school district. Uh, for our introduction, um, memory already knocked it out of the park, so we don't need to spend much time, but I'm Luke, we got Jake back in the corner, we're both from Intron, and then Ron and Nick are both on the Salto side of things. Uh, real quick, like, I, I promise I'll be fast on Intron. We are a company from, based out of Erie, Colorado. Uh, we have been around since 2007, women-owned women -owned company. Uh, when it comes to our partnership with Salto, we are, how many Salto dealers, Nick, are, are totaling in the region? A lot. Quite a bit. <laughs> uh, we we trade many, off being number one or two <laughs> for uh, the top Salto dealer. Uh, when it comes to being a partner with those folks, um, yeah, we're either very happy or angry at somebody else that they still want to But we are a full service systems integration company. So we handle access control, surveillance camera, anything low voltage, so fire alarm, burglar alarm. Uh, and we do take a lot of pride in tying those all together and kind of taking a comprehensive approach to uh, integrating the, all those systems and making sure everything lines up as uh, as well as it possibly can. So some of the other projects we've done recently are, are up there. Um, project management team, like I said, we take a lot of pride in having multiple disciplines all under one house. Uh, here, are some of the I know that cameras also that's an upgrade that you guys are also looking at. Um, here's our here are some of our main partners. Um, there's, that's not an exhaustive list by any means, but taking a look at integrating that with the from a complete to, uh, package, that's uh, something we we like to take a look at. So, uh, memory, you had sent over a handful of questions uh, on this list. Um, did this list uh, was this generated by by a number of people in the room? I'm guessing. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. We're, we'll likely hit most of these points during the presentation of the demo, but I uh, wanted to ask if there's anything else, maybe during other talks that you guys have had that have come up that we could uh, keep an eye out to address as we're going through the demo. Anything that's additional that we should add to this that you guys would like to have covered? Or if something comes up at the end, we can obviously address it then too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I think it'll be as the demonstration goes. You know, I think uh, well, there'll probably be some questions that we have during that. Perfect. You know, I don't. I don't want to give an exhaustive list right here. Uh, no problem. Things that we'll have. So we'll just we'll just go through the demo. Uh, well, we only will address these. So that no, no. Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Well, perfect. Well, I'll let Ron take it over and jump in from here. Where's the cable? I'll switch the HDMI. Oh, okay. I see it. The uh, shortest cable up there. Yeah, we could bungee jump with this thing. <laughs> That's a serious cable. That hurt at the bottom. Yeah, it's not the cheap frequency I get from Comcast. <laughs> <laughs> Xfinity. Let me plug in my superior Mac up here just because it's superior in every way. <laughs> I do that with the guys in the office. Like, oh, why do you use a Mac? We're going to grow some in here. I was going to say. Huh? We, we, we have that. Oh, you Dynamic do? Ah, on the team. Ah, so, so, yeah. We got Macs. So we got PCs. Hey. <laughs> Righty. I see someone has my toy out already. I know all about it. You know about what? The flipper? I got about four of them. Yeah. I know all about them. You just have to know what it does and, and why it does it, and then how to get around it. And I think you're gonna like what I have to say. Because, right. let's see here. We study these things. Oh, look at that, I got another brand new one right here. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> yes, know all about them. Okay. Know all about them. So, a couple things about Total. So obviously you guys have, and feel free to ask questions. Obviously you guys have done some research about access control, right? So I'm going to throw a couple of things up here for you to read. I'm going to speed through some of these so I can get to the demo. So let me kind of explain what Salto is. We're, we're different from everyone else because we are data on card solution. All right, with Salto Virtual Network. And I'm going to explain exactly what that means. So most systems that you guys have seen rely on a static card that has a facility code or a number <coughs> of some sort on it, right? So would you agree with me that when you order this card, you call some manufacturer and you say, here's my facility code. Here's my sequence. They stamp the cards. They send the cards to you. Am I, am I good so far? Yep. All right? When you get the cards, do you do anything else to the card? Um, well, I program it. You know, I assign, you, assign, assign it to a user. You enroll it. That's correct. All right, I'm going somewhere with this. So traditional access control, you order it, you receive it, and the security on the card is done. At that point, you receive it, and you enroll it. That's correct. Great. Salto will take those same cards, but we don't care about a facility code or card number because that stuff is static. Enter the flipper. Static information, it can grab it, right? Salto takes the memory on the card and we use those blocks and we encrypt certain areas, we format it, and we encode the card instead of enrolling the card. So you order a blank card. As long as it has the memory, we don't care what you do with it at that point. When it comes and touches our encoder or our locks, it gets formatted, it gets secured with encryption and algorithm, and we write data on it, and now the card becomes dynamic. Because every time the card touches a new access point or a reader, it is dynamically updated and changed, right? So what the flipper got last time is different from this time. See, I know about the flipper, all <laughs> right? Got a few of them. The flipper's looking for static information that it can repeat and repeat and repeat. Also, obviously with my fair classic cards, you kind of want to stay away from those unless they're EV1 or Desfire EV1, 2, or 3, right? Because the flipper is good at that part right there. You just may have to leave it down for an hour or two, right? So having said that, we believe that we have an access point for every opening. Whether well, that's a panic bar, a locker. I like to pass this around. I took the back off just so you guys could play with it. But again, the point with Salto is, and follow me, and I could be wrong, but what moves around the campus more, the lock or the credential? I'm going to go with the credential, right? You might be right. <laughs> so if the credential moves around more, and I need to get data for you to have access, I've got one of two ways. Either I push it to the device, or I get it to your credential. You follow me so far? Since the credential moves around, what if... I said the wall readers, what if every time you touch the wall reader, it would check the network to see if you had any changes or permissions, 
write it to the credential, upload everywhere you've been, and then put cancellation messages on your card for people who were canceled out of the system. That'd be a great idea. Well, what would that remove, Ron? That's a great question. It, remo it will remove infrastructure. Well, why do you need infrastructure? Because traditional access control is limited by two things, how far the wireless will go and how far the wire will go. <sighs> Let me ask, is, is infrastructure free? <laughs> it costs. What's involved in infrastructure? I don't know, maybe a switch, an IP address, some cabling. If you're in New York or Detroit, maybe some conduit, maybe some union guys, a lot of that, overhead. So if the data is right into the card and the card's moving around and I don't have to invest in infrastructure, then what in the world is the lock looking for? I'm glad you asked. So let's go through this part right here. So the card has all your doors, your zones, your groups, your modes, your overrides, your audit trail, collection of battery status, activation. We actually use a smart card. Watch out for this next part, to be smart. Instead of just for dumb reasons. So, if this lock is in the middle of a cornfield with no wireless and no wire, how does it know what to look for? Let's go through it. So the first thing that happens is when you present a card, it says, hey, I see a card, who are you? The card says, I'm Ron Schaefer. Great. It says, are you authorized into this door? Yes, I am. Here's your code, 11853B687. It says, what's your shift in your calendar? Well. I'm good Monday through Friday, 7 to 5. Great, it's 3 o'clock, let's keep going. Then it says, before we let you in, we're gonna say that access is granted, your card is audited with this date, this time, and also, my batteries, I know it's been three and a half years, my batteries are just now at 20%. Could you take this message with you on your smart card? Sure I will. The card says, but before I do that, I was at another door, and that door had a message that Stephanie Hall had lost her card or his card. I need you to take that message with you. Great. So that is a wire-free door that can be placed anywhere. Now, how do we get those back? The entrance door readers. So your perimeter of your doors are your check and choke points, right? Or your high security doors or your relay logic doors. So now, when I bring that card back here, first thing that happens is it says, hey, who are you? I'm Ron Schaefer. Great. Before I let you in, what's happened? I was at this door and it says it has low batteries. You should put that on your list and send maintenance a report right away. Great, I'll do that. Then it says, any news for me? Yep, 101 finally has low batteries because the batteries last anywhere from two to four years. Why? What, what work is the lock really doing? Is it pinging every two minutes saying, give me all the users from the database? It is not. It's not doing any work. So those little three AA batteries I'm just waiting to ask questions. I always use this example. I've got four brother-in-laws. I have one in each branch of the military, right? So we're a military family, right? And every time I go to visit, the guy at the guard shack doesn't know me, right? But what is he gonna do? He's gonna ask me a series of questions. And if I give him the right answer, he's gonna allow me to pass. If I give him the wrong answer, he's politely gonna turn me around. Politely, right? <laughs> So then it says, this is the great part right here. If you change someone's access <coughs> rights, they don't have to come back and see you. You change them, all they have to do is touch a building entrance or an internal checkpoint, or if need be, a door that has a wireless connection. That door will rewrite the access plan for that user without anyone coming to see you at all. But here's the fun part. I didn't invest in infrastructure throughout the building. Didn't need it. The card is doing all the work. It's not a Salto card. It's a standard off-the-shelf Desfire EV1, EV2, EV3 card, classic, EV1, I-Class, Seals, whatever you like. You buy the cards just like you. Or, it's my favorite, it's a wristband. Why? Because I don't like to carry cards. So maybe I use my wristband and I get in. Or maybe I use my fob to get in. Or maybe I unplug everything. <laughs> or maybe I use this, could you pass this around? Maybe I put that sticker on the back of my other card that is not compatible, and I use that instead. Exactly. That is an RFID credential that works with Salto and has 4K of memory on it. So then once that's happened, it says before you go on, Mr. James Farrell has lost his card, so it writes it back to the card and the credential. 
And if you could, could you just, you're so good at this. I'm just gonna call it. Just pass that around. Pass that around. So when someone says, Santo, do you have a wireless lock? I tell them, no, we do not have a wireless lock. Can anyone in here answer the question of what a wireless lock is? Please do. <clears throat> wireless lock is communicating. It's communicating. How does a wireless lock get its list of users? From the server. From the server. That requires infrastructure. Salto's database is 4 million users, 65,000 doors, no yearly license fees. It's browser-based, not web-based. There is no client to install on the end user's machine. Okay. So having said that, well, Ron, if we needed some doors to be monitored because that's the server room, it says you don't have a wireless lock. We don't. As the gentleman in the back clearly said, a wireless lock is a lock that depends on wireless to be fully functional. Well, where's the data held with Salto again? Card. On the card. Or on the phone. Or on the fob. I just wanted to say those three because they sounded good together. So that was the only <laughs> reason. <laughs> so that's where the data's at. So if I did need that, any one of the devices you see up here all have wireless and Bluetooth built in. It's turned on with the license. So in the event that you said I want to monitor that door, you can monitor and remotely unlock with Bluetooth. However, if the network goes down, which I know it never does, ever. It doesn't work. Ever. Because <laughs> I'm a network engineer. <laughs> never goes down, especially in my Cisco days, but that's another day, another, day, another life. <laughs> that lock continues to work. I can still make keys from the system. I can still push out mobile credentials because I'm not pushing users to the lock, all right? The data lives on the credential, which means if you decided that you wanted to have a padlock in the middle of nowhere and you needed to send someone access by mobile, you could do it because the access is on the credential. Did you just do the thing you do? Yeah, you could have passed it around, but also use this card I think I passed the card around. There it is. So you tap the bottom and you turn. Now it's a pretty heavy lock. It already unlocked. Oh, really? So if it were hanging, it would hang like this. So try it again. Uh, it's a pretty big one. So you do that. Turn. Exactly. Cool. That card is collecting all the audits. Now, the gate, if it was in a warehouse, you could say, I want to make that wireless. We could turn on the wireless in there and you would see every time it was unlocked or a card was used. So again, everything we have can be wireless, wire-free, and the controllers can be wired, okay? And that is its baby brother right there, if you just want to pass that one around as well. So again, we talked about the software. It's a lot bigger than the 3795. It's browser-based, it's <laughs> I gotta change that word. It's 4 million, 65,000 dollars. Again, whether you want to access the software on an iPad, a Chromebook, uh, you want to, if you want to use a Mac, which is the favorite, that's the best, by the way, um, or a virtual machine. There's no additional license, no additional fees. We don't like the nickel and dime. We want you to buy more, ch eat more, ch I mean, buy more locks. I'm from Atlanta, Chick-fil-A, sorry. We want you to buy more of these. This is what we want. We're not going to nickel and dime you. There is no, it already opened. I saw the green light. Yeah, I was just holding it in my hand. It, it, opened, it, it, it hand opens immediately. Over, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people ask, why don't you leave the green light on? That requires power. Right. We're trying to get three to four years out of it. <laughs> so the software is server-based. It is Windows-based. But once you're on the same network of VPN, it is browser-based. Just about every browser today is HTML, HTML5 compatible or higher. So whatever browser that you use, you're, you're pretty much going to be. The only one that is not compatible today is the outdated Internet Explorer, <laughs> which is outdated in every which way, shape, and form, right? That's all I use, actually. <laughs> That's it. Now I know why you can't get online. <laughs> so I just want to go through really, really quickly. John wasn't here. Twist the bottle. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Twist. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. They've been gracious to wait for us to get set up, so it's, it's perfectly fine. Oh, that sounds like a challenge. Bring your speed. It's all wireless because the credentials are in these little things. Okay. Turn this around. Hey, no, memory's going good. Memory's hiring. You got it. You got it, girl. You're good. You're good. 
I'll send you, I'll send you the application. So you don't bind it up. But when it presses, you got a time limit. And you can set that time limit, three seconds, six seconds, 12 seconds. You can also set it for ADA. So I like the ADA not just because my mom told me I was special, but I like the ADA because if I'm carrying tools, I can tap my phone, my wrist, whatever, and then turn around, grab my tools, and then still open it. And that works for all of it. So I'm not going to say pass this one around everywhere, but... This is for storefront doors where you need something and it's outdoor rated so you have your plate and the card that you want to use is right there. And that also is Bluetooth and wireless and wire free and all the rest of that. It has, yeah, it has a panel to put the paddle if you want to flip that around as well. Now the strike is, the, 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 um, the mortise body is not ours, that's the standard off the shelf Adams Wright that you have there with the standard Adams Wright panel that you can use. And I'm going to get into the specs of our hardware in a moment. Um, here is our golden architecture. So I would say 80 to 85 percent of what people come to us and they think they want is this. Then they say we have to have this. And then they really find out about what we are, which is this. Which means I can put a lock anywhere and I don't have to worry about infrastructure. Two 916s hole in that door, and I can put that lock on right now. Most of our installers are putting that lock on in 10 to 15 minutes. Pop through the AA batteries, now you're done. That's Comes less the mortise in. Say again? Less the mortise down pocket. Yeah, so obviously if the, if the if pocket's already mortised. Yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And if it is a cylindrical body standard yeah. right yeah. there, yeah. it does not have to be mortised. Yeah. You can use this now. The reason I like this, I call it the tank, because this can be mortised or cylindrical. The same, the same discussion here can be mortised or cylindrical. Where's the mini here? Is designed to be put on the door right there and it's only cylindrical two and three quarter two or three inch back set so that's what that was designed for you look like you're really interested so i'm just going to hand it to you <laughs> <laughs> that's why we make foam blocks and stop doing the wood blocks they're harder to throw all right it is and uh, you can hand him my trusty wristband to unlock it exactly so that one works with the card that you have sitting right there with the white dot on it. The card right there. You got it. Okay. So you can use it. You can use it on that one too. Look at that. Oh, you're in. Oh, I guess it's you're all the medicine. And I and I even I even took the back off so you can see the batteries in the back. Okay. Just three double three triple A's for those, three double A's for these. This comes with key override, not my favorite. It comes with a deadbolt. You can get it without deadbolt. You can get it with cylindrical, again, two and three quarters, two and three eighths. Again, if you're going electronic locks, you're not trying to go backwards to a key, all right? Um, that's the big thing. Why? Because we all have camera phones, right? We all know the sites where you can sit the key down and it'll make the little outline. You send it, and in two or three days, you'll have a copy that says, do not duplicate. It is so good. <laughs> the new ones even will trace out the dimples on the side of the medical key. So, yes, they're great. I've used them before. They work great. So here, date on card, product line, wireless communicating if you need to monitor and remote unlock. You still got the lock right there? I love stopping in the middle of a presentation to bring up the software, then go and find my lock and say, I need to remote open that door. And in four seconds, there it is. It's beautiful. Then I can even see the events that that door was opened. Do me a favor and turn the inside handle. I just want to see something. Wow, you opened the door from the inside. Why would I want to know that? Drop ceiling. Something is missing. Someone went over, they yeah, took it, and they walked out of the room. This allows me to go back to my camera system and say, go back to 2.34 p.m. and see what happened. Just saying, go ahead and open the door again with your card. Okay, well, this is clearly not you. <laughs> if you turn into that, no, I'm just joking. No. Yeah, it's, it's clearly not you, all right? Just saying. Just saying. Now, let's say we have an emergency. We got an emergency, and all of a sudden, I get a call, and memory says, lock down that door, don't let anybody else in. 
Okay, well, let's just lock it down then. We'll do that. Lock wakes up every four seconds. It sends the command. It gives you the alert. I go back to my real-time auto report. Uh, I'm going to clear these. So you see it? Try the card again. We let it open. Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't see, I didn't see you put it up there. There it goes. So it's telling me that JLo's trying to get in, but we're in the lockdown state. So I'm getting all the audits. She's trying to get in. I mean, we should let her in, you know, just mm -hmm. put one sitting outside. She's shady. No, no. <sighs> I like shady. She's not my type. No. <laughs> but we can see that clearly a person is trying to get into that area. Now we can say, let's flip our cameras over to door 101 and see what in the world's going on. Because along with this visual, you can have email alerts going out at the same time. There's an email event engine that is built into the software that's constantly sending out to your public safety, to an individual, to security, whatever that is. It's, hey, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. This person's trying to get in, and clearly that building's on a lockdown. All right? Then we can say, oh, we didn't mean to do that. We can go back to our system. Now, everything that I'm doing, I'm going to just end my emergency. Everything that I'm doing here can be done by an override push button as well. Okay? Push button on alarm, boom. And we can set that push button for triggered alarm events. We can set the push button to lock down doors or to unlock all doors. And you can zone them. You can say this push button only does entrances or it only does Smith Hall or it does the entire campus. Whatever you want that push button to do, it's all a setting in the software. This is the manual way. We can actually go in and we can make lockdown zones in our system and we can say, all right, I've now made lockdown areas. So if I hit area-wide lockdown, every door that is in that zone will lock down on North Campus, South Campus, or whatever it is. So you can dictate what is a lockdown area. Is it a physical device? Or do I push that out through the software? My favorite being, you make a card. I like the red card, green card. I mean, it doesn't have to be red or green. And you can say, anytime this card is shown at any reader, it's going to do the following action, which is lock down all doors. Send an email. Kind of works like this. I go in, I find an alarm event, and I have one that is called, where is my lockdown? Push button lockdown. So what this does is it locks down a set of doors when I push this button, and then it says, well, what do you want me to do? Well, I want you to start the lockdown of all south doors and close them. Then I want you to send an email alert to security department at gmail.com with the subject, doors are locked down. Then I want you to unlock the areas and open them if that is switched off. And then I want you to open the output for the seventh floor. It, you can keep going down the list. It's up to you how you control the lockdown, right? So that's kind of how that works. So I'm gonna flip back over to this guy. And then you have your traditional access control which is, hey, Ron, I need relay logic because I have an elevator, I have an electric strike, I have a mag, I have a turnstile, or my favorite, I have a parking reader. Have you guys ever put access control on a parking reader that's a mile away from campus? It's pretty hard, right, because you got to get infrastructure out there, right? It's got to be network, not with Salto. I can literally take our controller, which is this device right here, it's just an enclosure, that has six inputs and four relays. So since I can't get infrastructure out there, I can put this device inside the parking arm, connect the relay override to this, put the reader out on the gooseneck, give it 12 volts, one amp, and I am done. That parking reader is ready to go. Why? Because the data's where? On the car. In the control. Yeah. I like her answer better. It's not so <laughs> professional. You know that she's not being hard. She's like, no, it's in the credential. <laughs> yeah. Do you also do that commercial that you don't always drink beer? But when you do, no. <laughs> you didn't record that, did you? <laughs> All right, so we're pretty much everywhere in commercial, retail, education, healthcare. My sector actually is higher ed and K through 12, which is what I specialize in. I've been with the company since 2006. My role for 10 years was technical, technical support manager and solutions architect director at the same time. Um, so then I switched over to doing this market because this was the one that I had the most experience in. So I've been in this role for the last three years. Just really quick, we talked about the one-way, two-way. Prox cards and even certain smart cards are used for one-way communication only, where Salto is bi-directional. 
And again, we use the memory on the card. You see what I did with that? I said memory, All right? We use the memory on the card, and the card can have multiple technologies on it. It can be a smart card, contactless, it can be Mag Stripe, it could be um, dual technology to where you have a Surface chip as well. It's totally up to you what you need. This is the part I was trying to hurry to get to. So think of this as a 4K card and a 1K card. Normally when you order your cards, you're looking at manufacturer's block and maybe one or two that they custom code. And at that point, you're on your own. You're enrolling. It's between you and the flipper. I'm not flipping you off, I'm talking about that. It literally says flipper, right? We encrypted the first time it hits our reader, so it's formatted, it's encrypted, and now this is what the lock reads and writes. If a lock sees a compatible card but not a formatted, doesn't read. Same thing as me going to a store, buying a hard drive, and jamming it in this Mac or this Windows. It says, yeah, it's a hard drive, but it's not formatted. I don't know what to do with it. it has to be formatted, right? Then there's an encryption, and then there's an algorithm, then there's an A and B exchange key, and then you get the data. The traditional access control, again, is you ordered it, and you're done. In comes the flipper. Exactly. Questions, comments? So to recap, before I jump back into the software, I'm trying to be respectful of our time. All the information is on the credential, not in the lock. So when someone says, how does your batteries last so long? The card's doing all the work. If you're using mobile, and I purposely put my phone up so that I would not disturb, the mobile app, all right? The mobile app works with iOS and Android. If you still have a Blackberry, <laughs> there's gonna be some, some challenges, right? Our app is called Just In Mobile. If any of you would like to download it and I send you a key so it works on the lock, by all means. Did we pass a Blackberry on the stairs? I think so. Yeah, I mean, you see, there's one up there. Yeah. Okay. There's a few other crazy things up there. <laughs> I didn't wanna say anything. It might have been something. I don't wanna go that far. That's, that's the museum of curiosity. I didn't want someone to set up and say, you got a problem with that? <laughs> one of our schools thought I was on my stuff. <laughs> ball it's the old part of uh, Windsor Middle School. Check, check with a couple principals. The basket. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So I'm just going to go. Have you been in there? No. You should go there. We'll take you on a tour. Uh, yes, please. Halloween. 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 Yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Halloween. <laughs> so I'm going to use my mobile app here to get into the building. It's called Salto Just In Mobile. You can download it. I hit my little key. It comes up. And I get in. And I think that I'm Ron Schaefer. Oh, my phone is offline, so that audit will go as soon as my phone gets online. So even if you're offline, because I have no signal down here, it will store the audits until you get a signal, then send all your audits back out to the system. Just like if I run over here, and I use my phone here, and I get in there, access granted. Yeah, the corner, I'm not getting it. I do have T-Mobile, so. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And we're in the basement. Yeah. And it's, it's bad in this area anyway, <laughs> period. And, and we're surrounded by center blocks. Yeah. <laughs> we are. We're a bomb shelter. Yeah. So we get that. You can send a mobile credential out to anyone. So again, Nick, our mobile credential, go ahead. He just downloaded it if we want to get here. I love it. Put me to the challenge. Challenge me with a good time. All right. Put in your phone number. So Nick, if we were going to talk Put about the mobile credential. Our mobile still credential is the most walks. cost effective. So MSRP, our mobile credential will be about what? $7 a year. Right. So for that one person, I'm probably not going to lose okay. this as much as I'm going to lose this. Here's the best part. I'll share this. I'm not, <laughs> you, I'm not going to let you swipe right on this. Right. All right? <laughs> not going to have anything to hide. But I'm just saying. I'm not. Baby pictures. Absolutely, and pictures and pictures of unicorns. That is it, right? So with this, this is more secure than a card. You ask me how? I mean, come on. Every phone down today, it's either fingerprint, passcode, or facial. So way more secure than this. And nowadays, if I lose this, I can track this, find it, and shut it off. So again, this is going to cost you more over time. Repeated administration cost. This will not. All right, the, the app ahead, is a per user per year, year not fee. device. So think of parking spots. Yeah. If you assign a space to me and I get kicked out or I leave, 
you cancel me, you can now assign that to him. It's good for a year. All right, I can break my phone 80 times, you're assigning me the same spot again and again, so you're not paying for that again. It's for the entire year. Yeah, it's a non-consumable too. Right. Great question. My only question, but thank you. All right, so let me show you how simple this is to put in because now he has challenged me. All right, so let me put him in. Even though I do not know who he is, I'm going to delete Dale because I don't know who Dale is. So Dale, you're out. I'm going to put a new person in. And because I'm using Windows, let me just. Have we hit any other questions that have come up that we haven't spoken up on? Anything else? Not good. Yeah, there you go. All right, I'm about to put him in. First name. Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, I'm gonna stop at Jeff because I can spell Jeff, all right? I'm gonna go down. <laughs> I can say that, it's what? It's tricky the rest of it. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna pass for 200, Jeff. <laughs> so, when do I want his card to, to start working? I can put an activation date in on when the card should start working, but I'm not. I can say the card is gonna expire at a certain date and time, let's just say next week. I'm going to say this is the best part of the system right here. Every system has an activation and expiration. We have a revalidation as well. What does that say? Now, this trick question, Nick, do not answer. Um, <laughs> what's the first thing that has to happen when you lose a card? Go to Jackie. Go to Jackie. Go to Tony. Go You got to talk to Jackie. There's <laughs> one thing that has to happen bank. before that. You got to realize you lost it. Thank you, sir. If I had a cookie. <laughs> You know what? She got a candy bowl right here. I, I don't <laughs> but he has earned whatever trinket, because no one gets this question right. No one, ever. You get all the toys. You get it all. <laughs> you get it all. You get it all. <laughs> no one ever gets this question right. Toys. Ever. You got to realize you lost it. I lost my gas card a couple months ago. And I was kind of ride sharing with, with a neighbor of mine because I live a good ways from Atlanta. And I, I lost my uh, my quick trip gas car. I didn't know I lost it until like a week later when it's time for me to drive. So I'm logging in, boom, I see all these charges on there. Luckily, you know, they canceled them all. But again, you don't know that you lost something until you go to look for it. So with this revalidation says, obviously if you cancel it and it's wireless or wired, it's gonna cancel it right away. So the wire free locks that are not connected, they make sure that you have touched an online point every one day, six days, 80 days, hours, whatever it is I'm contracted before you can touch a disconnected lock. Hmm. Proactive security. Gotcha. So I'm a contractor. You can say, Ron, you got access one day at a time or only for eight hours at a time. Now, Ron, your card doesn't expire until August 2nd, 2024. However, we don't pay overtime here. So you got eight hours, that's it. After eight hours, you can't get any more time till tomorrow. Or I can set your card where as long as you go back to an online update point, you can get another eight hours. However, it's gonna flag me now that you just turned your card on again for another eight hours. I'm gonna contact members and say, hey, I, I thought the contract was only here in the daytime. What's going on? Now it's going to flag me. We won't stop you from doing a job, but we know you stay here after hours. So you got that. So I'm going to put that back to seven. I'm going to do days. And now I'm going to say this is going to be a mobile user. All right. I'm going to put plus one for the good old U.S. And I'm, I won't call you at night, I promise. What's the number? 970-420-5234. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a little message. Save. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna sign. You got your phone handy? I do. What? Well, well, first, do you have signal? I do. Okay, you must get. You must have Verizon, AT and T, the good stuff. <laughs> Verizon. Yeah. All right. All right, I wouldn't say it's the good stuff. It costs more than T-Mobile. <laughs> Check your phone. I don't know T-Mobile. You get a text message. Um, well, did did he put the text code in and set it up first? Yeah. It should be at the screen where it says no keys found yet. Yeah, he's there. Now you now you do it. So you just hit that two. There you go. 
Yes, yeah, so when you first set it up, there's a security okay. code that makes sure yep. you are you. Right. So that code comes back. Sight. You have to put that in, right. and huh? then you there's can receive keys. Because oh, now yeah, it encrypts the app on. to this database. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And then tap that and present. Start over. Yeah. There you there go. Go. <laughs> go ahead and tap the lock. So you got, you got a red, which was that's good. great. That's exactly what I wanted. That's exactly what I wanted. You said no. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted because I'm taking you through a demo. That's Can you do that for me one more time? So I'm not doing it. Nothing else. You just tap that. All right, tap it. Yep, and then present. You see, see how that flashed red? Mm -hmm. Guess what it said on the screen? Opening not allowed. You know why? I gave you a digital key, but I didn't give you access to anything. I just wanted to provision you, and that was it. Sure. Now when I get permission from the boss, to say now he's on the payroll, he's contractor, now give him access, great. Let me go in and give him access. So I'll go back in, I'll find Jeff, power one to find. Jeff, I'm now gonna give you access to everything. But here's the great thing I can say, but only between office hours, or only between, I've got tons of times on six to one, or only between six and seven. So I've got options here, very simple. I can even say I want to give you access, but only until Saturday. Now, after Saturday, I want you to automatically lose access to the uh, to the all access zone. But I still want you to have access to everything else, True. because I'm going to forget to take this away from you, and I need the system to automatically do it because I'm going to forget, right? So right now, I'm just going to say same as key. I'm going to save, and now that that's done, you now have it. Try it now. Try one more time for me. I didn't have my mic. Hey, he's in. Now, where's my audit history stored? I can go back into monitoring, audit trail. And here's everything that Jeff's been doing. He tried to get in. He got in here. I can see when communication was stopped, when it started. Um, and I can set alerts for anything you see on the screen. If, if the server goes down, it starts saving alerts, starts sending alerts. If there's a communication error, if there are anything you can think of in the system, and I'll kind of show you everything that you can set. If I go here, I can set an alert for anything in here, which is access point was updated, closing not allowed, communication, uh, anything in here can be a trigger. The door was open, daylight savings time changed, the door was under duress, because we have a duress alarm. If you know that you're coming in the front door and you're being forced, you can put the first three of your pin in and put the last one in wrong, it'll go into duress to let you know you're being, let, let the system know you're being forced in, right? So you can set any of this up with the filtering in the system. And again, lock down areas and monitor. So now that I've done that, I wanna switch back really, really quick and show you something really, really cool. So the mobile, we don't hold any data in the cloud. Your database is on-prem, it's a SQL backend, and we have tons of imports and CSVs and database synchronization and ODBC that you can bring in. So you can manipulate the data. We have Active Directory, LDAP, so you can bring your users in. Uh, also your card operators with your system operators. So single sign-on based on your Active Directory settings. And that's really simple to turn on. It would be, it looks similar to this. If I go on into my general options and then I'll look at my notifications here yeah, wrong one it's the email setting there it is and that's good. there it is so you would enable the LDAP and then you would turn on your main system schema configuration and then you can turn this on for group relations and your proxy client as well so again you have all of that to set in here for your LDAP operators and your LDAP card holders. And you can actually enforce the lockout policy by saying, if someone logs in, I never turn this on because I always lock myself out. Number of failed attempts, lock them out. Reset after 10 minutes or the account remains locked for this. Or send an email to the administrator if I'm locked out. You can enforce a, a, a password complexity uh, protocol or in Enforce, this is not my favorite right here. Change password every 90 days, I don't like it. My sticky fills up under my keyboard with all my passwords, <laughs> so I don't like that. So let me just turn all 
all this off because I don't want any of that. Mm -hmm. Just write it on the back of the card. Uh, you can do that. Now that would be handy. <laughs> I use a sticker. <coughs> yeah, you could do that as well. So a couple of hardware things that I want to show you about our hardware. Let me just. So our hardware is grade one, BHMA certified. Uh, there's a company out of California called Town Seal that makes all our case for us. But I have to say this. Up until now, you've probably been looking at a system within a system within a system, which means you choose a lock, you find a platform, and you hope they work together. So that's like, I have nothing against my Android users, but that's the Android concept, right? I'm, I'm, I'm building to this. And then you have the Apple concept. With the Apple concept, whether I use an iPhone 10, 11, 12, 13, or 14, they guarantee the end user experience from end to end. Why? Because they make the software, the firmware, the hardware. They know what the user experience is going to be. Android, just as good. There's a Samsung Android. There's an LG. There's a Motorola. And they all give you different end user experiences, right? You have an Apple Watch, right? I have one, too. They're different models, right? The end user experience is the same. So that's Salto. We make the software, the firmware, the hardware. We make the technology and the encryption. We know what the outcome of the experience is going to be. We're not hoping this is going to play nice with this, and hopefully it's going to play nice with this and use this. We designed it this way. We know what the outcome is going to be. We're not saying take that padlock and pair it to that panel and put it on this wireless gateway. We're not doing that because we made the wireless access panel too and the protocol and the encryption value. So we know exactly what the outcome is going to be. So when you call our partners and say it's doing this, they know what it's going to be because we design it that way. So that's the difference. We guarantee the experience. We're not guessing what it's going to be, which is why for the basic platform of the basic software, MSRP is only roughly around, Nick? Space Basic? Space Basic. 390? Yep. That's it. We want you to buy more of these. We're not trying to nickel and dime you for license fees at the end of the year. The only license fee you're going to have is mobile. Why? Because we don't own the cloud. Some guy named God owns the cloud, but we don't. <laughs> all right? Just want to show you this. And our lock cases are monitoring. So right here, this is monitoring. This anti-pick back here will give you intrusion. It will give you forced open. Uh, to give you a number of things, I actually have a slide for that. So if you take a look, oops. So while you're getting there, Apple has built-in planned obsolescence. They support certain models and then they drop them. They don't continue doing security updates and stuff and they become problematic for us to have on our network. Mm -hmm. What's your scheme, if you will, with your hardware, do you drop support for five-year-old models and they're never to get security updates again and all of a sudden we have to replace it? We're so kind of hostage. So, so that's great. So since we make everything from end to end, um, I started with 2006, in 2006. We have not sunset a product yet. Now, some product is outdated but still works with the new software, like some of our older models didn't have Bluetooth chips. They didn't have NFC. In, in 2000, when the company was started, that, that wasn't a big thing, so that chipset wasn't done. Our older locks are not compatible with the Apple Wallet and the Apple Watch, which is about to be released in a moment. Our locks from the last three years have a hardware secured element in it, which Apple and Google requires to communicate with the Apple Wallet and Google Pay Wallet. So again, that hardware secure, secure element is something inside that handles the decryption and the communication to those mobile devices. Grab a lock from 2005 Salto, it'll still work on this platform. It'll still work with all the physical credentials, but it won't work with mobile. So to this day, if I went back and um, let me pick on one of the older ones that I did when I was here in 2009, I, I grabbed Princeton University. Yeah, they haven't changed our lock yet, but their locks are not mobile compliant either. Back in 2009, it was just not a thing. And if you talk to the controllers and said, hey, the upgrade for each lock is 30 bucks to have a Bluetooth chip in it. They were like, no, we're never going to use that stuff. We're not getting that. Okay, fast forward 10 years later, 
and here we are. So what we did as a company, instead of having a thousand different SKUs, we just put all the technology in and you turn it on with a one-time license and that's it. You don't want wireless on the lock, don't use it. Then all of a sudden, memory comes back and says, we gotta start monitoring that door, something happened. File license for it, tap it with this portable programmer, it's NFC, load it, it's on. Tell it which gateway it's looking at and you're done. That's it. So you don't have to make the investment of the heavy lifting infrastructure today. This may be something down the road, but at least you have a compatible device. And again, upgrades are free software for the life of the product. And every time you get an upgrade with the software, guess what comes with it? New firmware for every device you have. You may not need to update the firmware, but if there's something new, or let's say, be honest, we find a hack, like the flipper. We can push out firmware, you can tap it with that and upgrade the firmware. You don't have to send it back to us. So yes, I love the fact that you just have the little flipper sitting out. <laughs> I just hope everybody who came before me understands what it is. <laughs> I can tell memories doesn't work because she doesn't have the SD card in there. <laughs> you gotta have the SD card. <laughs> <laughs> and here I was giving you all that credit. I've never used the it. Flipper's really angry right now because we haven't used it in a bit. Yeah. Okay. Rob, Rob, talk to me real quick now about, so you just said uh, firmware update, you go around and you touch that door. Yes. That obviously would be problematic in a school district if I have to go touch every door that I need to upgrade. I, I, am I able to do that from? If the door is wired or wireless, you push the firmware out. But again, firmware is not something you do every year, two years, sure. or even five years. Sure. It's if there is an issue, there is a roadmap and a way to, to, to take care of it. So it's not like, oh, I bought this and I'm locked into this timestamp of when I purchased the lock. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, firmware can be pushed out. So if the lock is communicating wired or wireless, I simply go into my system, I find that lock. I have a few virtual machines on here. So I go in and I say, okay, Salto Network, which locks are online? Uh, it is, let's say this one, how many locks connected to it? It's this, I can say show firmware, firmware comes up, I say, yep, I need to update this. Update, it says which one do you want? I push update, firmware's going out to the device. So I can do up to 10 devices at the same time. So yes, if you need to do that, that is available. Otherwise, you download it to this. This communicates by near field communication. Once it's in here, you say update. You hold it here for 60 seconds, the firmware is updated, and you're done with that one. But that's something your partner would come in and take care of for you. That, that would not be something you would do. True. That, that would be your partner. So great question, by the way. So with the software, the software is partitionable. What does that mean? It means that I can set up different areas of your campus to say when memory logs in, she can only see these type of users and these type of doors on the south side of campus. When Nick logs in, he can see everything because he's the IT admin. When Ron logs in, he's security. He can only see audit and lock down doors remotely. All right? So all of a sudden I hired John and John is now responsible for all maintenance. He can only see maintenance logs. So you can make as many partitions and groups as you want. And you can dictate what's in a group. So if I were to look at, let's say desk users, I simply go down and here is every feature. If you look at the heading, here's every feature in here and I can say, okay, what can you not do doors? So I want you to view, modify permissions, lockers, what I want you to do with that. Keys, what do I want you to do? I want you to be able to read and delete. I don't want you to do anything else. What about users? Well, I want you to cancel but not assign. And then you pick the partitions of the data that they can view, and then you add your operators to the system. I have none in there, but you can add your operators. So again, software is really user-friendly, really intuitive. And as far as reading a key, if you find one on the ground, where is my white wristband? Can you throw it back? Which one? This one? Yes. Yeah. Throw it as hard as you Ah, there we go. So if I find one on the ground and I need to read it, who does it belong to? She tells me. Ah, j -Lo. Yes, that is her wristband. <laughs> she has been here. It tells me one time. this is the seventh time that she's lost her card. So this is edition number seven. And at eight, we're going to break the bank because it's $10 to get a new one. Damn it, j -Lo. 
I can also see reject messages, meaning, hey, she tried to get into a door that was in an emergency lockdown. It was door 101. It was this date and time. There's the wrong code of a card. And at the same time, there's all the access that she has. Admin, all access, all doors, these doors. And she's only allowed in Monday through Friday between these hours. So just by reading the card, I get all that information that's right here. So I don't have to go to the door and get it. It's sitting here. Or how'd you get that? The network is down. One last time. Where's the data? In the credential. <laughs> you guys didn't want to answer because you didn't want to be shown up. That's fine. That's fine. It's a hard word to say. <laughs> she got you. And then I can say, okay, so the lock wasn't broken or damaged. The lock did work. Why, did, why was she denied? She clearly has access and she's an admin. All access and all doors. Well, let's scroll up. She was denied because at the moment she tried to get in, the door was in an emergency state of being locked down, and she is not a first responder. Now, you can set credentials to be first responder keys, so they will override the deadbolt, the lockdown, and everything else. What you don't want to do is give that permission to everybody. Something funny. We do... Uh, Okaloosa County School System in Florida. It's Destin, Florida, and, there, and, and they only have a couple thousand right now, but the goal is to do all 13,500, right, across school district. So they were doing a lockdown test. And in the lockdown test, they called me up and they're like, Ron, the lockdown failed. All the admins, everybody got in. So I'm remote into the system with our partner, and I'm going in and I'm looking, and I'm looking because they're, they're heated right now. I go in and look, and they've given this particular function to everybody, which is override lockdown and override privacy. If you put that on every card, they're gonna get in. You'll never guess what the answer was. Well, Ron, in a lockdown, we don't want anyone locked out if there's an active shooter. Okay, so you lock the doors down, but you gave everyone override. One cancels out the other. You can't lock the door, but still give everyone access to the door. That's where you have process and procedures to muster or shelter in place. But you can't do both at the same time. You can't go forward and backwards at the same time. It just doesn't work like that. Transmission, it just doesn't do it. <laughs> All right, so in essence of time, because I have a couple of things I want to show you, questions, comments, concerns. I have a question. Yes. In the design of the system, every external door would need to be wired or wireless, correct? No, not necessarily, but great, great question. So we have these on exterior doors, and I want to bring, bring that up, that look like this. Great question. They look just like, okay, let me go back to here, right here. Look just like this on exterior door. We'll take panic. your Von Duprin panic bar or whatever you have, or just a strike. And this is outdoor rated. So you literally, without coring the door, running the wire down, then transfer hinge, power supply, request to exit, and the other $3,000 items that go on there, and just have your current panic bar or ours, the battery pack on the back, and our lock. And you have now secured an exterior door. That's all you need. But I understand that. So yes. I, I guess my, my real question is, is because the credential is stored in the memory on the card, card right? Um, it has to go by a sentinel or some sort of uh, device to be able to read it, to be able to put your canceled or not well, on the card. So if you walk through a door that's not connected to the network in mm -hmm. some way, wireless or wired, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to get into whatever other door is not wired, is wireless or wired inside the building, regardless of what happens if they don't communicate. Well, so close, right? but not necessarily. So your access rights are on your card and only your card. Yes. And your access rights don't exist in any other lock. Correct. So when I tap this door and get in, that doesn't mean I'm gonna get into the door right behind it. I'm gonna get into this. I don't need, and I see where you're going, I don't need to walk past a Sentinel or an <coughs> online door to get into this door. I can have completely separate access rights from the wire-free door versus the wireless or wired door. Correct. I understand your question. But, but the hole that I'm seeing, mm -hmm. maybe I'm wrong. Just, no, please, please. Holes in this because if you pass, 
Say we revoke the credentials from somebody. Yes, and we, 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 we got a bad person, right? Right. And they have the card, and it's going by a a uh, lock that doesn't have not uh, communicating. That's not communicating. Right. Uh, they can still get in that door, correct? Well, so, so I like right. this part. All right. Right. Well, so we used to call it the virus, and now we call it pollination. <laughs> right. And you can you can understand why we do that. <laughs> pollination. Pollination. It works better. Which, which, which six A like, class is this? We keep going. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it paints a better picture. So your card's revoked, right? You sneak in behind Jake, and you want to yeah. go. You want to go to the doors you normally have access to, right? Well, everybody in this room is going to get what's called the blacklist, and so we're going to be pollinating that around to every online, offline, communicating, non-communicating lock. So you touch any lock that anybody else has touched before you. Your car will be revoked from that lock and erased. So virally, it communicates on every mobile phone and every. I'm sorry, pollinating. I can't say it right. <laughs> uh, the three years pass. You get pollinated, and the pollination goes from every door to every door. So, quick example. I'm canceled out of the system. And then all of a sudden, Nick comes in and he touches a wireless or wired door. He touches the offline door. He's now told that door, my card is no longer valid at that point. What's interesting about this scenario though is, is that people, humans, are, they, they do the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. And we have people that have access to an external door, they're gonna run in that door every single time, mm -hmm. right? And they're gonna go into their classroom, it's gonna be near that door, mm -hmm. right? So if both of those doors are not wired, and they don't get those updates occasionally, and only once a month, a person that's been to another door goes through that door, mm -hmm. we got this, the non-pollination problem. So like, how does how does the system compensate for that? So, so right? each route, you choose strategic doors that have to be online. So every so what, what I'm saying is that through this design, every single external door should be yes probably uh, depending on how your wired. traffic moves throughout the building. But you're right, should oh, be wired. Sure. And then the course. interior doors would then be safe to be used using the credentials updated and pollinated, however you want to call it. <laughs> then you can do you can do other areas like the teacher's lounge or areas where they always yeah. go. Just strategically <coughs> place those line those doors yeah. that are going to be communicating the, to, the, to the, alleviate the, that, but you're absolutely correct. Th this is the safety net right here. So if you were never going to use any wire free doors mm -hmm. and everything was going to be wired or wireless like where you're going, ignore this. This is why this feature exists. This feature exists, and I think I may explain it earlier, but I didn't do a good job. This feature exists for disconnected doors. To say, if you have not touched an online point within two days, two hours, whatever it is, you don't have the rights, valid or not, to touch a disconnected door until you go back and touch a wireless wire door. So the problem is it's training them at that point in time. Yeah, because if, yeah, if somebody's yeah. going in and they, they, they think they got fired, they're going to go home. Because they can't hit them real quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be interesting then. <laughs> or they'll just go home anyway. So, like, <laughs> in those areas, <laughs> I'll just like, go home. In those areas where you have a learning curve, <laughs> yeah. that might not be the right lock for that area. That's where a wireless lock would go. But again, our wireless is not real wireless. If wireless goes down, that lock continues to work mm -hmm. and read from the card and you can issue a card. But again, if there is an issue where that is going to be an area of concern or training or low management, this is not the lock to put in that area. So when the wireless is on, yes. Does, how much more battery does it use? Ten percent. Just ten percent. Ten percent. Because okay. we're not pushing the users users cycle support to the now. door. The lock only wakes up and looks for any changes every four seconds. The heartbeat goes from the gateway to the lock, and it's looking for changes. It's not looking for a download list of users. The only download list of users you get is the moment you cancel someone, it pushes that to the lock. The heart beats every four seconds. So if there is a new cancellation <coughs> list for post yeah. in the gateway, it pushes it down to the lock. But if you were to Active Directory or LDAP or sync with someone and it pulls 30,000 users in the system, we're, we're not pushing it out to the locks. So you will never see a spike on your network with us. That information doesn't go down. That information goes to the card. So one by one, virally pollinatingly, when you touch the door, hey, I got my update. You touch the door, got my update. You touch yours. So collectively, everyone's dumping their audits in and doing the work. But again, great question. If you have an area of concern, a low management, this is not the lock to put in that area. However, 
once these locks are in, and we can give you references later, Salto's normally on a campus or, or K-12 environment where anywhere from two to 8,000 doors because then you can see the power of it and it's going. Um, you save on infrastructure costs, and at the same time, people start to learn that, hey, those doors right there, they clearly told me when I come here, don't piggyback. And if I piggyback, I can't go that way, especially if it's negative two outside. I learned very quickly, don't piggyback him in. Remind me so, yeah. of your name again? Steven. Steven, so two things have to happen, and you've identified them. Number one is for a successful install of any access control, including Solto is, we have to understand how you guys work and move. Absolutely. Right, so we need to design the system the way you guys move. Yep. If we don't, then it's going to be set up for failure regardless. And then number two, there is going to need to be some education out there to the staff to say, hey, if you go to your classroom door and it doesn't unlock because you tailgated in, go back to the door you came in and touch your card. So also, that's a great question if I can jump on that one. So a lot of times they're like, hey, I don't want to send them back outside to touch. So what they'll do is they'll take something like this and put it in a wall and they'll call it an update point. So it's just in a common area in the lobby. And it's sitting there, and a lot of schools will have a sign that says, to update your credential, tap here. So if there's any issue, or let's say I'm the substitute teacher for the day and something happens, that change is done, I tap my card, I'm in. Now if the door's wired or wireless, I don't need to do that. That's only for your wire-free doors, or I've got the padlock out there. Or my favorite right here is in the case that, you know, and I doubt if you guys have this, where you have a door that's soundproof, fire rated, don't put another hole through it. You take the cylinder out, you screw this in there, and now you have a lock that is Bluetooth and wireless and wire-free capable in five minutes. So I'll just pass that around so everybody can see. We actually put those uh, at a school, a neighboring school around here on where they store the Chromebooks for the kids. It's an easy install. Take the current cylinder out, screw that one in, put the right cam on the back, you're done. Same battery life on those? Yeah, same battery life. Actually, this was a little bit more. Because it's, it's really not doing that much work at all. <laughs> exactly. And so these can come in any shape, any form. Just to show you that, they actually come in a server rack form too. If you take a look here. <clears throat> So I also wanted to show you, let me just... While he's pulling this up, another good thing to learn about Salto is all normal off-the-shelf batteries, you can buy these batteries anywhere you want, right? So there's no specialized um, batteries you have to order directly from Salto. You can buy, you know, AA batteries, AAA batteries, wherever you want. This is the template to install our lock. So we don't butcher the door. 9 sixteenths, you have your one and a half there, and a 9 sixteenths, the lock's ready to go on the door. That is the template. The template comes in every box. Like literally this paper template comes in every box. Two and three quarter or two or three inch back, two and three eighths. You measure from the edge of the door to there. And this comes in there, pop your holes here, and you drill. Again, that's for our partners, but that's what the footprint would look like. Tom, yes. Several of the systems that we've seen um, integrated and work really well with video, video surveillance. Um, but we didn't get one from Salto on video surveillance, so where do you fit in with that? Like, how does it integrate with that? So we have the open integration, and we have quite a few, which we can give you more information, but I want to show you just a couple of names that I did put in there that you might be familiar with. Get past that, it was kind of at the very end. So that's just a few, but yeah, a lot of the systems and the camera systems out there, for instance, like Milestone, as he showed earlier today, they've written that integration to where they can pull the audit so the moment a card is used, even if it's a delay on a wire-free door, when it's used on a wireless door, goes back and it says, hey, this audit happened. I'm going to record from here to here and store it. So again, we don't make a camera system, but we don't lock you into a camera system. You can use whichever one you, you would like out there on the market. And then we have an integration path for that. Okay. Just like, again, I didn't put them all on here, but that's just some of them out there that have written. We don't write integration. They sign an NDA, we give it to them, and they write it in. Because they recognize these are not our competitors. These are our partners. They can't do what we can do here. 
That's why they've written SOTO into their system. Now again, we, we have our own head in, but if you were to go with one of these down the line, that system can also become the head in. So you're not locked into anything. What? When you said you didn't get uh, anything from SOTO, what did you mean about that? I'm sorry, um, to preface that, we have another RFI out for video surveillance that, just, ah, that was just, just closed yesterday. Got it. So. Um, most yeah, of your major um, camera manufacturers out there, we're going to have an active integration with. Um, what what would you want that integration to look like? What do you what do you want to happen? It's a good question for Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, Jeff. Snicker, snicker. I mean, just a lot. I mean, it really, it really just the idea of a door is is open. You know, I want to be able to trigger a video camera to record. You know, to find out what's going on. Um, that, that, that's really the biggest thing, you know, when you start talking about tracking uh, a flagged individual, we want to see something, you know, what doors is that person going into, um, you know, camera can pick up certain things and everything, but then we're going to want to see, you know, how are they accessing, where are they going or whatever, so we can alert people, you know, SRO or whoever, yeah. you know, on site at a particular campus, you know, this person's here, we know that they swipe that door, you know, we know that they're on this camera, so it all works together. So, so I'm really glad you said the first part about that is because the word integration should really be spelled more money, right? Because you got to pay a license fee from both from both uh, software companies. The first part of the integration of when I swipe a card, it records that and timestamps it. That's a free product from Salto. It's called an event manager. We can send yeah. events over free of charge, no integration needed. Any video platform on earth, right? With integration platforms, true integration, that's when you would get into, um, you know, was was a guy who was five foot ten, he had a blue shirt. <clears throat> that's where all that other stuff happens. But but if you think about how access control and VMSs work, video management systems, you're gonna be doing the ninety percent of that driving in the video management system anyway. So we have tons of campuses, um, some just right down the street that have tens of thousands of blocks and have looked at the integration cost of do I want to put this in my camera system? Well, if I can just get the event and the timestamps in this video clip, I'm going to be doing all the driving in my BMS anyway. Why am I paying tens of thousands of dollars a year to do that? So the answer is yes, we have them. Yes, we can do it. Does it make sense that we want to do all of that? Or can we set it up to where we just push an event over and then you do all the driving through whatever BMS you choose anyway? And this is what he's talking about. So like I said, a lot of campuses, you know, if I have IT in a room, they will investigate the camera system, say, okay, camera system, what do you need to trigger an event? I need this, the door name, this, great. Salto can send you that for free. We're gonna give it a name, how do you want it? JSON, CSV, you want it ANSI, how do you want it? You have different outputs here. What's the UDP, the TCP, and you send it out? Great, here you go, no charge from Salto. Every time an event happens, here you go. Then, here you go, no charge, no license fees, no anything. You choose the camera system. So we don't keep you locked into anything. You get one camera system after three years, oh, we hated it, it sucked. Now we gotta get rid of Salto because it doesn't know. Change the event stream, fire it out to another. You can fire it out to multiple systems. So yes, free of charge. You set up the event stream, the field configuration, which is the output, uh, how you want it filter, you confirm it, it sends a test, you're ready to rock and roll. That literally is all it takes. You can even have this going to an event stream in the cloud if you have some type of alert notification board and you need the JSON events, you can do the same thing here to where it creates a situational awareness board that maybe you have up that every time something happens, it's posting it to a live stream that you have. So you can do a lot of things without the extra cost with Salto. Great question, by the way. touched on a little bit with the operators uh, coming in LDAP wise and whatnot. Um, what other is, does it have an AD sync otherwise as far as bringing in our actual like, clients who would be out there, not operators, not people logging into this system, but bringing in people that assign them cards and whatnot. Does the card have, users. Yeah. That can also happen by Active Directory okay. as well. Cool. So, I, and I didn't show that, but yeah. that, that also exists. So under here, I, I, and I didn't click see where it says enable users. Mm -hmm. So users are card gotcha. users. Yeah, okay. And then you have operators, which are up here. Gotcha. So you do have both. Now you can also bring that in by a CSV file. Mm -hmm. You can also use uh, 
SQL to SQL or Oracle to SQL. So on the back end, if you have that, and that is our synchronization here. So you can pick and choose how you want it to come in here. If you just want to do a DB sync at the end, and you know the table config configuration for the third party system. Again, some schools that I've gone to, they have PeopleSoft. Mm -hmm. And if you're not in PeopleSoft, you're not in Salto. Mm -hmm. So they'll set up the events in the DB sync table, sync the staging tables and change notification from zero to one. So when that happens, you're out here, you're out here. And then they disable the ability to add users or delete users in Salto because you've got a point of reference up here or a system of authority up here. So let's say you were going to do that. Now you just go to the setup screen and it's great. What are you going to import? It's user types. What is your data source? It's an SQL server or it's an Oracle or it's an ODBC data source. Is it coming from SQL server authentication or Windows? So yeah, all that exists for free in Salto. With uh, Active Directory sync is the amount of times or when it syncs, is that customizable? It is. I'm glad you asked. So well, that's kind of how we're using what we have now. Okay, so yeah, sense. That so is. like somebody gets pulled out of Active Directory, they get pulled out of the card system and you know, all their rights get taken away. So it's the same thing here. That comes out. I've got a couple of tests in here that I do myself. You can have multiple feeds in here. So if I were going to use uh, my Active Directory, I don't have my Active Directory set up, but so first thing you need to do is you need to go in here and you need to set up your tables. Right. So all this needs to be set up first. And once you have that, you create more options on the next screen. So once this is set up, you set up the timing, how often, uh, when a user comes in, should it preserve the changes, should it avoid the changes, should it merge the changes? Because mm -hmm. if I'm just adding a door, do I want to overwrite, do I want to remove? So once you get this set up, more options show up in the next screen. Gotcha. I think you have preserve or delete. Right there. Cool. So once you, and, and we have a whole document for this. The basic manual of the system, you'll never believe it, it's right here. So if you click this little question mark, anything that you can think of in the system is going to be here. You know, hey, how do I add a user image? Great, this is how you do it. So you don't have to remember, hey, what did my partner say? How do you do this? The manual is here. You can add it by a local file or a webcam. Everything is there. There's also a badge printing software that is built into the system as well that can use your current badge printers if you so decided to use that. <clears throat> so if you take a look here, I could go into card printing. I think I made some god-awful templates, so don't judge me. <laughs> um, so I can employ a template. You could build it. Yeah, I did. I yes. did. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's, I know, I know, right? It is so bad. So yeah, you can say, okay, the picture is gonna go here on the badge. On the back of it, we're gonna have another picture that's gonna here, and you make the template. And it says, hey, where do I get this picture from? And then you can say, hey, it's gonna be from the user profile here, or it's gonna be a constant image of the school. You can set the position, the size, go back to the front. <coughs> should have been there. Again, I'm not good at this, but you get the idea. And you can call this visitor template or employee template. So now when you put a user in the system and you want to print that badge, you can go down and say, all right, I want to print a badge. Great. Which template do you want to use? And this is where the template shows up and you hit print. So yeah, all of that comes in the system without any yearly license fees. You buy a one-time license to turn it on and you're done. So our kids, all of our students do not, none of our students have cards to get at. Okay. I think they just have doors time. Is that right? Like in the morning? Yeah, for open, passing grades so and stuff. Like and stuff. And so auto so yeah. automatic yeah. opening yeah. changes. Right. Yeah. So once they're locked down, you know, bell rings and the doors lock, kids come in, they need to get buzzed in to get in like some of our back doors and stuff. We're going through the front door. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they will take the door hinge down. Mm -hmm in there or something. Some of those are easier to see on the camera and some not. So what sort of notifications do we get on? That's where you get this. So if these latches don't go in, I get either door jar, door prop, or intrusion because we have status monitoring built into the latches. Now obviously if it's electric strike or mag or anything like that, then we have relay logic that we can set on the back 
that says, hey, if there if the door is not bonded or it's not a bond sensor or it doesn't close or it's open without a card, then yes, we can record those audits, send notifications to the right department at that time. So that that is actually built in. So like in, in your controllers in my system, I can go in there and I could set, you know, what my inputs and outputs do. So for instance, I could come in here and I can say, hey, I want to know if there's an intrusion, a request to exit, privacy, emergency close, lockdown, is the input, is it normally open, normally closed, is it supervised? Um, so you've got all those options there with the inputs. And then for, for relays, you can assign them to one reader or not. Is it a strike? Is it uh, tamper or communication loss? Am I monitoring door that open intrusion? Door detect the card read, was the card rejected? So again, you have all these that are programmable based on the notification that you need. So nothing is static in here. You choose what you want. Now, it is static over here. This is gonna give you intrusion, uh, door jar, uh, blocked, um, tamper, uh, door, I said door jar. So, because that's monitored here, where this is configurable. So we do have that. They get, they get creative. Oh, I know. They get, they get very creative. <laughs> yeah. But if you use, let's say you're using a mag and it has a bond sensor and it doesn't bond, and you have the bond sensor tied to input one and it doesn't bond after five, six seconds, whatever that is, your security department is going to get alert that that door is not latching or closing for some reason. Okay. So yeah, that, that's built into our product. Good. Hardware related question. Yes, let me pull up the hardware slides. I knew there was going to be some. What did I tell you in the car? I knew it. I put hardware slides in here just for you. Go for it. Maybe just just, just going out go off of the students are crafty. How do you access the battery on like a door unit like that? Here. Yeah. That's a great question. And, and is it easy for a kid to walk up to it and rip a cover off? No. So, <laughs> easy as relative. He would so, never do that. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask this. And because it is hard to take off, you need, need a T20. T20. You need a T20. If it has a deadbolt, you need a T20. And you need an Allen wrench. If it has a deadbolt, uh, you're not going to rip up and walk off and rip it off. You first got to take this guy off. All right. And then, I've already taking the screw out under here because I can't get to it from here, yeah. right? <laughs> so once you take that off, then you pull down, and those are the three AA batteries. Okay. Now, once you get this off, you can change them. Right. It's just getting this off. And that, that was the security portion I was wondering. This is not the handle screw. A lot of people think if I take that little screw out right there, the handle's going to come off. Right. It's actually not. Take a look. There are four internal screws that actually hold the handle on. This screw takes the play out of the handle. All you're doing is tightening it down on the spindle. Okay. These are the handle screws here. So taking out this the screw on, on the handle itself. Just pulls the handle off. That's it. Just pulls this off. Go yep. for it. So then. Oh no, taking that screw off, out. nothing comes out. Responsibility is nothing comes off. Uh, when you pull that screw out, you're nothing job. comes Tech. off. It's a torch off. Oh. That's why you have a partner. Oh, okay. I answered you earlier. Cool. Yeah. It's our job to help Steven design mm -hmm. and make sure the right blocks and right doors are put in the right place. Mm -hmm. It's our place to make sure that the <clears> software <throat> is up to date mm -hmm. and batteries are changed and whatnot. So that that's on the integrator side that we work with with you guys on. Sure. <clears throat> so let's say, speaking of door detection, let's say you didn't want to use the mortise and you just want to use cylindrical. Then you'll use this optional door detector kit right here, which is just a little mag contact in the door. You could also use this instead. That goes in the the jam of the door. Exactly. The front, yeah. So we do have places, not my preference, they'll say, oh yeah, our mortises work fine. We've had them for 37 years and they work fine and we don't want to change them. Great, you can use your existing mortise. But we recommend you put a door monitoring in there because we know your 30 year old mortise does not yeah, have we're getting away ability. from the mortise and stuff so yeah that's what i'm going around doing right now is replacing all that stuff and just going with the cylindrical schlage, yeah yeah if you're yeah. just going to go with cylindrical then maybe yeah this one right here would be it because the same technology in this one 
is built into this one. I would just go with that thing, absolutely. I'm trying to How you get the batteries out of that one? Well, yeah, I can pass it that way. I'm this one? So I, I, can actually, I can actually reach this that one. one. Okay, so, so it's underneath there. But it's also a catch, and I don't have a little poker tool. Oh, okay. You have to press this button in there, pull the handle off, and then go under here and take okay. the 20 out, okay. and then you pull up and take okay. it out. But there's a little, and I don't have one that right. you have to press to take this out. Gotcha. I want to show you, but I don't have a little. We're good. Uh -huh. I just want to make sure that one was equally as difficult. <laughs> that is the one little paper clip. You know I got a paper clip? Because that's what works. Yeah, if I had one, I got everything but. I don't think we do. The paper clip. It's one in my bag. Just the one. I have one for now, my question, I, I guess, would be, are we just going to use this? If, if we were to go with this, would this just be on our exterior doors, our entry doors into the school? Not classroom? Paper clip. We don't have what we're talking about in interior doors other okay. than like MDF or if we okay. needed like okay. electrical, electrical rooms and yeah. stuff like that. <coughs> but you know, let me introduce you to my company. I'm just disappointed in myself on this one. Because that would be my question. Right, fine. You can keep these. Are we going to stand or? Yep, take that one out and see what you're showing. I brought everything but a paper clip. That's what I was like, no, we can pull that off. But this is only a mini. I know, I know. I got everything but that. I've done that a few hundred times. <laughs> so this is a reverse thread screw. It's a blocking screw. So you don't take the screw out, you screw it in. And so think of the cover. Think of the cover like this, and the screw comes down to block you from moving the cover. When you go up with it, you can take the cover off. So it frustrates people because like, it won't come off. It's like because you didn't read the directions. Right. So it is a blocking yeah, screw, it's a T20. They're going the old school look, you would see ready to take Exactly, it's actually the opposite. <laughs> And they should have put a hole at the bottom of these right. blocks. So, so not to jump in on this conversation, but that's kind of the beauty of Salto too. Right. right. Like you so, don't have to make that decision today. Unless you get above, you know, and the batteries. Watts, then you do have to make that decision today. Right? Are. I don't think that's going to happen. 65,000? In here. Yeah, a little bit. We'll right now. <laughs> yeah. kind of stick to this little well, pad. We've only had one you person get close, right? and that's where the batteries are. Well, I'm not really heavy maintenance. I take care of them all the lot. So that's what we're going to do. That's the place we're going to do. And I know that we've got a couple thousand. I should flash green when I walk past the door. There it is. And then you close the door. And I remember they all have the cover back there. It changed the matter. So you see the blocking screws in. We have that hand comes down and blocks that. Yeah, yeah. So the so there's a there's a the down the top, which is so so the down. Down. I know all about it. Yeah, you can a lot easier on the demo. So it's a lot easier on the demo. the demo. It's a lot easier on 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 the demo. It's a l
Sunday we were trying to do it. It's a good point. 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 It's a good point.
Maybe. So if we had a wireless connection with these, we would have to have a, a Bluetooth something in the area for it to connect to, correct? If you decided to use that, which is not necessary, but if you decided to architect your system out that way, this is the gateway that you would need. How close do those have to be to the doors? 30 feet. So this does 16, 16 doors within 30 feet. And I have a, I have a uh, node wired in. So let's say you want to go down the hall, around the corner, and upstairs. You want to do more without another port from the switch. You take this little node here, which is MSRP. I know it from the way you say I don't it. know it. So MSRP is about 150 bucks, and you wire this in by 45, and you drop it upstairs. You talk to another 16. Let's say you want to talk to 16 around the corner. You go out from here, drop another node in, and you can talk to another 16. My resources on the switch is still one IP address, one port. And how's that wired through on the node? Is that just 45? 45. 45. 45. Yeah. So you can, so talk, you, you can let it go pretty far. You, yeah, get, you, you can, get pretty you can, far away from that. Yeah, so you can do a total of 112 blocks with one IP address and one port. Right, so one IP address and one port. Like, bring your That's a switch statement. That's the the switch uh, statement. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I got to get some. Yeah. Just our just airports that, that we do. Like, we do Atlanta Airport, Houston Airport, Chicago, Midwest, LAX. We do all of these because <laughs> the first thing they look at is, what are you pushing across my network? And their cybersecurity team is there with laser beams. Like, hey, what are you pushing across my network? Take care. When I say absolutely nothing, they're the data's going somewhere. I'm like, that's not that's the big thing we get now for. Yeah, I got cards. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. So, I have one other question. You yes, earlier please. mentioned ADA. Because these aren't, like, we had a vendor improperly wire a door, and then ADA was triggering and trying to pull the door, but the door wasn't unlatching, right? Because it was secure. Um, that caused some issues. So, how does the ADA switch interact with these door handles. So if it's ADA, and that means you're gonna have a handicap operator, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna be using this controller and then these readers, right? So with this controller, I'll just, you know what? With this controller, you have inputs and outputs there. Everything's programmable. So what we would normally do is whatever your handicap operator is, we would connect that, let's say to Relay 4. We go on the system, and we'd say, hey, when the card is read, here are the steps. First thing you do is unlock the relay one. That's the strike. Two, fire relay number four. So one will be the strike, let's say, and four will be the operator. So boom, unlock this. One second later, start the handicap operator. Then in reverse, you can now lock the strike, and then the operator starts to come in. So that's all software driven through us, through the inputs and the relays. And then you could have it to where you have your Rex in here so that if someone comes up again, then start it over again. Unlock that, open the door. That's all programmable. It's up to you, and it's up to you how long it's engaged. That's completely up to you. You actually have two settings in the door, one for regular and one for ADA. Where if Ron comes in, boom, it only hits the strike. That's it, right? But if my friend James comes behind me, boom, it starts to count down. Now it's on relay one. Relay really four and just on my inputs. Really. All that's programmable by the user, by the card, and by the relay logic on the okay. Completely programmable. Can you lock these doors from the inside? Or these, just these, with the uh, with the card? So these are always always locked. They're always locked. They're always locked. Well, you can change the functionality of the lock. But by default, yeah. they're always locked. So what he's saying is can I leave it unlocked? Yes. So this lock, I want to leave it unlocked for some reason. Uh, let's see, where's the wristband? Whose wristband? This, there it is. You want J-Lo's? J-Lo's. <laughs> so if I do this, and I think J-Lo has office mode. Let me check. So if I keep that there, and I think she has it, and she does not have it. There it is. So now this door stays unlocked. That's a privilege on the card. If I want to leave it unlocked, if I want to lock it back, Leave it there to flash red. Now you also have timers on here. You can say from eight to five, it's unlocked. After five, it locks back. But by default, you can always get out. By default, it's always locked. And it's never engaged. So you're not looking at a clutch mechanism where it's static and you can override it. There's nothing to wear out here. It's never engaged. There's nothing to wear out. 
I don't know if that was your question, but I want to make sure. No, Stephen, were you were you meaning if you were in the room and the door is closed, can you can you lock it? Correct. It's locked. always locked. Yeah, it's it's about to fall that lock out of the box unless you program it differently. That lock is always locked yeah. when you shut the door. And it doesn't have a blocking mechanism. So in our locking devices, the first thing that can go wrong in a mortise or cilantro is blocking mechanisms. Why? Because how blocking mechanism works, it does this. If there's ever any pressure on a blocking mechanism and you show a card, it can't unlock until you release the pressure of the door because it's binding. Right. We don't have that issue. That's why I'm a static handle. Always be careful of that. All our locks. That office mode that you just showed for this, mm -hmm. is that a uh, global setting or can it be set to just one lock? It can be set to one lock, multiple locks, the user or a time of day. Okay. So when, when I go into the user, that is a setting that mm -hmm. I have to give the user for the locks and then the lock has to have that feature turned on. So Yeah, it's important setting, that you just said that. Even if you have that as a user, but that lock is not assigned that ability, you yeah. won't be able to change that, that lock. Right, I have to, so too far, I have to give it to you and the lock has to have it. And you have to be within your time rights to use it. So I can say you have it and the lock has it, but you can only do it between 12 and 1 p.m. That's it, lunchtime. After that, I know you have it, but you're not allowed to leave your door unlocked after that time. Right. How many transactions can be held on the cards? So it depends on the memory size of the card. If you have a 4K card, the card holds the last 120 events. The so, lock holds so the last. So the cheapest 000. card would be 120. Uh, cheap wise, I, I'm not pretty sure on the cost of a card because you don't. Yeah, because we're gonna buy the cheapest one. Well, between a 1K and a, <laughs> seriously, MSRP difference between a 1K and a 4K is about a buck fifty or maybe two dollars. So I, we would probably never even quote you the 1K. Right. Now keep in mind, the lock-in non-volatile memory, if it's wire-free, holds the last 2,000 events in non-volatile memory. If it's wired or wireless, well, then it's up to how much hard drive space you have because it's going to report everything. I'm just, I'm just talking about the card for the transactions that they're... The yeah, volume, between the 100 and 150. Yeah, 100, 150? 100, 100 between 100 and 150. Yeah, so the card's going to hold, and the card is only holding your events. Not mine. My card's gonna hold mine, your card's gonna hold yours. There's not a card that exists today. Our capacity is four million users. Well, I, I thought though the cards would, would pollinate things by transmitting other people's information or the system information to other locks. So only, only, only certain cancellations. Yeah. Cancellations. Only cancellations. Only cancellations. No cancellations. Other right, so if his access rights change. His access rights don't ride on my card. What if a cancellation happens? That's global. It goes on everybody's card. Yeah, that's global. And that's not users. That's a particular code and algorithm that tells the lock which codes to invalid, invalidate. So it's not like you're saying, I know I put a demo, Ron Schaefer's card is this, please cancel it. So what would happen if we had over 150 people getting fired? You, you cancel 150 people, cool. it sends it out to all wireless and wireless <laughs> points, and then every <laughs> single idea. person that taps it after that, that happens to touch a wire-free lock, they pollinated that new lock that 150 people are no longer valid. And we have that. But that's not 150 user profiles. That's not no, that's no, not no, 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 no. It's an algorithm that tells it, based on this seed and this code, these are no longer valid. Yeah, some type of hash number that does something. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And you say that's a bad day, but our turnover is easily 10% staff from year to year. So after our last day of school in May, it isn't unlikely that we would terminate up to like 150 cards. I give you one better. I give you one better. And I like to pick on my, that makes sense. Not, not my problem child, I love them. I'll pick on Princeton. When they roll over for a school season, there could be 6,000 people that are out and another 6,000 people that are in. So yeah, those, those are cancellations. Well, I mean, you talk about student housing, it could be 30,000. Right? It could be. It could be. Take, 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 take one of our airports. Take Heathrow Airport, for instance, yeah. where they've got 15,000 doors. They could have that many cancellations in one week. So yeah, right? that's the way What's it works. What's the probability you guys using mobile credentials? All right. Hi. Now, now, when you have mobile credential, right, everything, not to say that it, it's not a, for instance. Actually, I think, I think that the possibility of us using a mobile credential is high for the people in this room. True. It's yeah. extremely true. low for our, our, our regular user base. That's true. That's, that's, that's true. That's true. So with mobile, 
you bypass the wireless, you bypass all this. You get two mobile, factor authentication. Right, and yeah. mobile's going to the cloud, to the system. Mm -hmm. So I can see everything that we just talked about two factor. is right. done. That'd be cool, man. We force two factor anyway, right? Yeah. Like yeah. we force two factor on our other stuff. It's like a whole district, like fake but real two factor. Yeah, it's exactly. really cool. <laughs>